Hello everybody and welcome back to HPI Guy. Now you may think I sound a little different, I do have a bit of a sore throat so I do apologise for that. Today we're going to be taking a look at some of the components for a future video which will be the uh, budget 180 build. So as you can see we've got a box full of parts here and uh, let's give the game away straight from the start. We can see we've got DALRC on there so I think you can kind of figure out what kind of frame we're going to have. So let's have a look at some of the components that uh, we're going to use. Um, ESCs. Now I'm going to be using things that I've used before. I'm not going to use anything that um, I haven't used before because I want to have experience with them uh, and know that they are good. So the uh, DYSBL Heli ESCs have been working fine for me. I've been using the 20 amps and these are the 16 amps. So I'm going to use these for the first time. When I say the first time, it's the first time these are 16 amps. I, as I say, usually do use 20 amps. But for this application, um, I won't need anything more than that. So that's fine. So obviously I've got four of them. And there will be links in the description to uh, where you can actually have a look at these or purchase them uh, yourself. Flight controller, well, pretty much obvious. Uh, the Naze 32. Uh, we've actually got the breakout cables and everything with this, which was nice. Wasn't expecting that. Again, links will be in the description. Video transmitter. Um, I've moved away from the immersion RC transmitters. So they were like a 600 milliwatt. Uh, for a couple of reasons, really. One is because of the size. Uh, the 600 milliwatt is far too big to be sticking on 180 size quads. Also because the power. Uh, 600 milliwatt again it's just too much to be using especially when you're flying with friends um, or if you say go to fly in an underground car park or something it's just too much power you don't need that amount of power if you're flying with friends and you come and land in next to yourself even though you're on separate channels you can go over their frequency and cause all kinds of trouble so uh, lately well I'll say lately the past couple of months I've been using the Aonway 5.8 gigahertz 200 uh, milliwatt now these can take a voltage from 6 to 28 volts so it's perfect it doesn't really matter what uh, cell setup you are running whether it be free or four cell um and it's 32 channels uh, you've got your dip switches you do get the uh, instructions to tell you uh, what um, where to put the dip switches to get particular channels and it's really easy i tend to fly on channel 4 of immersion Oh, dropped it. Um, but there will be some other ones that will be coming up in the future, uh, like the 25 milliwatt uh, version with race band. And I think they might be uh, a future um, upgrade, shall we say. Uh, the other reason that I use this is because it has the 5 volt out, and that can power my camera. So let's have a quick look at the camera that I've got here. If you're wondering where all of this has come from, it has all come from banggood.com. So let's whip it out. You can see I've got a nice little camera in there with quite a wide angle lens. Sorry, we're not really focusing very well, are we? There we go. With a nice wide angle lens and even a built in microphone. This takes 5 volts. So I will be powering the video transmitter with 12, and 5 volts will come out of here to power the camera. Um, now, power wise, uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, bear with me. Here we go. This power distribution board. I've used these before. Let's let's get it out the bag. Uh, Should have really prepared all this. Now I actually used this power distribution board already on my 180 uh, Baby B. And if we have a look on the bottom here, if we can focus in, there we go. We've got a 12 volt out and a 5 volt out. So I tend to run the 5 volt into the flight controller to give the flight controller power. Then the 12 volt goes straight through to the Aonway to give that power. And then the 5 volt from this goes through to the camera. And that's how it works. Now, one thing I was worried about was given throttle up and the ESCs and the power drain causing noise, but fortunately, with my experience using these um, power distribution boards, I get no interference on the camera at all. So that's why I'm using this one in particular. Um, the motors you've already seen, which are the, again, DYS BE1806 2300KV. I've done some um, bench tests with these and got some decent results. Um, and I fitted them to another 180. And they are 3S and 4S capable. 
So again, that's why I'm using these, because they're cheap, they're pretty powerful, and they are free and 4S capable. So it doesn't matter if you're going to start with 3S and then move up to 4S, or if you just want to go straight to 4S, this machine's going to be capable of doing so. Uh, receiver, I'm using the FR Sky TFR8 SB. Now, I'm only using this because I've got a Futaba. Um, I can use S Bus and whatnot, um, or just go straight into all of the ports. This is going to be specific to whatever um, radio that you use. So that's just in, uh, the, the receiver that I'm going to use. Um, as you would expect, a way of connecting the uh, battery to the power distribution board. So that came from them as well. Let's get these motors out. Camera. Um, it's actually the Mobius. I think it was the Mobius C. Let's just uh, unwrap this. So this is the Mobius C. You can see that the lens is slightly different compared to the Mobius B. It is a wide angle lens. Um, these are very small, very cheap. In fact, they're extremely cheap these days. Um, and they don't weigh very much. So on a 180, this is a perfect camera. Um, also, if you are flying a 180 for the first time, you might be a bit scared about smashing a GoPro or whatnot. So again, stick a cheaper camera on there at first. So this is the first time I've used a uh, C lens, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that performs. Also, uh, does it always have one, one LED on there? There's my other 180, yes it does. The LED slightly changed, it was a hole, and now it's actually filled in. So there's a slight subtle difference there on the Mobius C again. So that's a Mobius uh, B that is on the machine. You see the lenses are slightly different. And this is my uh, other little 180, as you can see. Nice little setup. Really, really enjoy flying. That's probably my favourite uh, quad to fly at the moment. Let's put that out of the way. Um, another nice thing is you can power the Mobius from your receiver. So I can run a servo cable from here to the receiver to give this actual power. So as soon as I put power supply in, it gives it 5 volts and keeps it charged constantly. So that's how I tend to run my setups. Uh, nice thing as well from uh, Banglood, they sent me a memory card. Uh, with the Mobius. Uh, let's have a look at the frame. So as you already know this is a 180 budget build so I've got the Dell RC frame. I've got to get it out. That's actually very nice quality. There's virtually zero flex in that at all so it's quite a thick frame. Um, I'll put the stats on the screen. Quality looks very good, in fact. Much better than some of the Chinese ones that I've had in the past. Uh, so, you may have seen this on a... Well, a couple of other little channels, actually. Uh, but I haven't seen anyone actually flying it yet. So, as you can see, we've got a couple of plates. Uh, a Mobius plate and a camera plate as well. Also included is all of... The accessories, so you've got uh, motor protector mounts, and they also double up as your feet, which isn't too bad. Not a bad idea. Um, first quad I've seen doing that particular uh, mod. Screws, four um, isolation mounts. I think it only uses three, so you do have one spare. Standoffs, not too bad. Uh, they've been milled down slightly. Um, gives a different look to them but um, uh, from my experience flying 180s I've crashed them very hard into trees and they're, they're so small there's not that much inertia when you do crash so uh, even though these have been milled down I think that won't really be too much of a problem uh, and then we've got some excuse me <coughs> uh, rub grommets to stop the wires getting pinched as they go through the frame um, I do also have some Jamfan propellers 4045s which I will put on for the initial testing. Um, again, links in the description. And just to finish up, I've got the 5.8 antenna from Spironet. So we will do a comparison uh, using this video transmitter um, receiver aerial and a standard aerial.
So there you have the main components for my budget 180 build, which will be coming up shortly. Again, links are in the description for all of these parts if you want to actually purchase any. Uh, if you do so, it really does help me out uh, with future videos just like this. So that's my quick roundup of my budget 180 mini quad build, which will be coming up in the near future. If you have any comments or questions, then please feel free to leave them below and I'll try and answer every single one of them. If you haven't already, then please click that subscribe button and also have a look at my previous videos going back over the last three years. Also, if you can give me a quick thumbs up, that will really help me out. This really does help share my videos around other people on YouTube. If there's something you don't like on this channel, then let me know. Also, if you have any criticisms about the videos on how I can improve them, then also let me know as that will help me improve the channel. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.